All right, I want to talk about the Osborne One uh, memory mapping. Um, it has a strange memory mapping. It has a 64K of memory, and it's mapped into three banks, okay, bank one, two, three. And uh, the bank switching is done with an instruction on the Z80. And when they wrote the code for the Osborne, I'm be I've been told that the only Z80 instruction they ever used was for bank switching, and everything else was written in 8080 code. So <laughs> they're probably a lot like me. I never learned Z80 mnemonics and never learned Z80 tricks and stuff. I just always programmed in 8080 or 8085, and uh, it's the only thing I ever, I ever knew. But anyway, it's an old machine. Um, so. I, I mentioned before when we, when I opened up the Osborne is that the 64K is a little bit of a lie, a little bit. Um, so it is 64K, but um, if you take a look at the upper 4K, okay? So this upper 4K, so it starts at uh, zero here and it goes up. So at F000 to FFFF is 4K of memory and it's devoted to the video display. So it's a memory mapped video. It eats up your, uh, so you only have 60K left over for the rest of CPM. That's fine, you only need 32K really to run CPM quite well. But um, yeah, it's not quite 4K, I mean, not quite 64K, it, it's, it's 60K. And then there's a little bit of extra stuff in here. The, the BIOS lives, uh, lives here and um, BDOS and, and stuff. So anyway, there's a little bit of extra here. That's pretty typical for CPM systems. And then uh, typically your uh, program start at 100 and uh, uh, the very bottom end is, is, is the reserve for interrupts and stuff. Um, so very, very typical. But what I wanted to talk about today was, uh, well, how do they, uh, how do they use this 4K? How does it how does it function? It's one of the most fascinating things I find on the Osborne is 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 the actual video display, because most computers at this point in time required you to have a um, either a, a, a serial monitor, a serial um, a terminal. Uh, that's the way uh, the the MSI worked and stuff. You needed a serial terminal or you needed a television set and you hooked it up to a television set and then your resolution was really quite poor. So this has a built-in monitor which is, which is pretty nice. So how does this 4K work? Well, um, for each byte of, the, uh, of that 4K memory, each byte is a character, right? And a character is gonna be stored as a seven bit, um, a seven bit number, okay? So zero through six is seven bits, and that is an ASCII character, okay? So all of the ASCII characters uh, are a seven bit number, okay? And then they reserve the eighth bit for underline, okay? And there, so there's a underline uh, bit, and, and I'll show you how that works when we get around to looking at the, uh, get looking around now. The characters are uh, uh, seven by nine pixels, and inside of a, an eight by 10 pixel box. So we'll take a look at that as well. But anyway, um, it says here that the memory is 32 rows of 128 characters, but on the screen, you only see 24 rows of 52 characters. So I don't exactly know how they use that memory mapping. Um, if they did pages of video or so, I don't, I don't know exactly how that was functions in the software, but in the hardware, um, this is how it's functioning. Now there is a ninth bit and the ninth bit was used as a dim attribute. So you could, you could have the display bright off and dim, a middle value, okay? So there, was, there were three values. Now, uh, if you send video, right? Video is uh, an analog stream, and when it's at its biggest, you get a white, and when it's at the lowest, you get a black, and then you can get any in between. Well, this is gonna have, it's gonna have three states. It's gonna have white, gray, and black. Okay, and it's that intermediate step is set if you have this bit set. So there has to be one extra memory chip in there just to handle the dim, okay? So you need a 4K by one bit of memory just to handle the dim. So that's, that's an oddity too for this, uh, for this thing. I don't know what, what possessed them to put in the dim. Seems like you could have done a computer just fine without dim, but they decided they wanted to put it in there, so they did. Um, okay, let's go to the next section here. All right, so how do you turn a character into something you can display on the screen, okay? 
and you do that with character generation. And so here is a, um, uh, this is a little bit confusing, but these are the bits and um, a television, let me explain a television. A television is called raster. And so you sweep a line and then you come over here and then you sweep a line, you sweep a line, you sweep a line. It's almost like weaving a tap, 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 tap a tapestry, right? As, uh, you can you can go one zero one one zero zero, and whenever you hit a one, that's that's a white, and a zero is a black. So white, black, white, white, black, black, and so you 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 have a a, a bunch of dots, and then you put a, a bunch of other dots, and then you put a dot. So you have a row of dots, row of dots, row of dots, row of dots, and you, and you just keep going and keep going and keep going, and you do a whole 4K of memory that way. Okay, and um, so if you have the, the letter A, okay, which is uh, a particular byte, okay, it's, it's uh, 0x, it's 41, 41 hex, I believe, and so uh, that's it here. So we have 41 in the, uh, in, the, in the address. Now this is what we want to clock out. To make the letter A, Okay, we want to have ones in certain locations and zeros in other locations, okay? And these are the lines as we scan it down, okay? So line one, line two, line three, you're gonna have ten lines in order to build up to build up one to build up one character. And as you clock them out, the ones will will glow in the phosphor and the zeros will, will not glow, and so you'll build up this letter A as as you scan this thing, okay? And so, um, well, you have the value 41. How do you turn that into all of these little bits? How do you do that? Well, you use a character generation ROM. Okay, so this bit pattern is stored in ROM somewhere. Well, where's the ROM? Well, this is the schematic, uh, partial schematic of the uh, Osborne. And here's your, here's your memory bank here. Here's all the chips in memory. And um, here's here's an extra uh, row here. Um, I think that's for the uh, the dimming, um, or maybe that's the dimming someplace else. I think. Um, yeah, this is not dimming. Um, there is the underline bit, right? You have um, where was that piece of paper? Sorry. Um, you have seven bits of character, and then you have one bit that says to do an underline, and one bit that says do a, a dim. And so the underline is this extra row that I'm showing here. All right, so how does this work? The memory needs to be used by the microprocessor, okay? And so uh, this is the data bus uh, for the microprocessor, okay? So here's your eight bits of data. And they come over here and they go down into the memory, okay? And um, so there's a, a, a buffer here. So you can think of this as a kind of a, a, an on-off switch. You can, you can either have things go this way or not. You can turn, turn this off so these guys don't see anything. Um, or you can have them go this way. So you can have it go different directions. You can either have, either have it go this direction or have it go this direction. So if you're using this memory just as memory, you can read it like this. If you notice the memory has separate input and output pins, so the input pins are always tied to the data bus. So, so the, the micro can always write to these things, but the output, the output can do two different things. The output can go this way, which is the video, or it can go back this way. So the, the machine can actually read the video RAM if it wants to. Not that it needs to, but if it wants to, it has a separate path that it, it can go back and you can read video RAM. Maybe that's for testing purposes and stuff. Um, or if you don't care about video output, maybe you get an extra 4K. <laughs> That'd be kind of strange. Um, so this is the magic of how a character is generated, okay? So let's say you have the value 0, 0x41. Zero That's the letter A. Well, the letter A then gets clocked into this uh, uh, latch, okay? This is a latch. So when we go to that memory location and we clock it into here, now... Uh, 0x41 is in this uh, 
latch, which means it's on this bus, which means it goes into this thing. And what is this thing? Well, this thing is a PROM, okay? Programmable read-only memory. And this is the data, this, this has all those bits that make up like the letter A. All of those funny bits, all those 10 rows of bits, uh, the eight, eight by 10 row of bits is programmed into, the, into, this, into this ROM. And so this is the character generation ROM, all right? And so um, the, the number 48 goes into here and it, it enables uh, addresses zero through six, but addresses seven, eight, nine, and 10 are, are each row. Okay, remember it, has, it scans rows. So it's gonna go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then that counter resets. And so these guys are always going zero through nine, zero through nine, zero through nine, zero through nine, and it's, it's going through memory. And at each memory location is the line one, line two, line three, line four of the video character. So when you get line one to come out, line one comes out here, all right? And line one comes out as a parallel bit of information. But we don't want parallel information, remember? In video, it's a serial data stream. You want one zero zero one zero one zero zero one one. You want a serial data stream coming out. So you need some way of turning parallel data into serial data. And you do that with a shift register. So this is the shift register. So you shift line one, clock, 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 clock. You shift it out. And then you load line two, shift, clock, 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 shift it out. Line three, blah, 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 shift it out. So the shifting out clock is called H count, okay? And H count is also known as the pixel clock or the dot clock. You can see it here, um, the dot clock actually. The dot clock comes into the, uh, into, the, uh, into the clock pin. So dot clock is that H count. I think this is an enable pin of, uh, for this chip. Anyway. Um, so dot clock, how fast does dot clock run? Dot clock runs at eight megahertz, okay? So those bits are coming out, that serial data stream is coming out at eight megahertz. It's faster than the processor, right? The processor's only running at four megahertz. And the RAM's only, only capable of one megahertz. But remember, you're shifting out this data serially. This parallel data only, gets to get, only needs to get loaded one eighth of the time. Right? If you have, or maybe one tenth of the time, if you're shifting out 10 bits of information, we're shifting out here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven bits of information, plus I think there's an extra bit in the counting and stuff. So I think you're shifting out eight bits of information um, to the serial data stream. Um, so the, this part operates at one eighth of the speed. It's only, it's only one megahertz. Okay, which means the RAM only has to operate at one megahertz. So you have one megahertz RAM, but eight megahertz video. It's really quite clever. Um, and so this thing just sends out ones and zeros and ones and zeros and ones and zeros, and there you go. So how do you get gray? <laughs> and how do you get underline? Those are kind of two separate things. All right, this is a bit confusing, but, and I didn't print the whole thing out. Uh, doesn't really matter. I can remember. This is, this is gray. And, uh, this is video. And this is underline. Underline. Okay. So how does this work? So normally, uh, underline and gray are just zero, okay? And the video's coming in. The video comes in here, it goes through this OR gate, and um, it uh, comes in and it goes out, okay? So this is the video. The video goes here, the video keeps going out, and this is actually goes to ground here, okay? And so the, this knob here is the brightness. So it can go between five volts and ground. And, and so this is the brightness adjust here. Okay, that's what, this, that's what this does, brightness adjust. And the brightness adjust works by a resistive divider. There's five volts, five volts here, and then, and then these two act as a resistive divider, and then the video comes out and you get to adjust it. Well, what about gray? Remember gray is just adjusting that video voltage down a bit. Well, if you turn on this, 
you're adding another voltage divider and you're pulling it down some and so this will lower the voltage here to a gray state. Now this chip here, these are all open collector, okay? Sometimes you put a star on them to tell that they're open collector. So they're all open collector. So normally you'll just come along here and you'll whack this up and down. So it'll go five volts, zero volts, five volts, zero volts, five volts, zero volts. And then, uh, then this will divide it down. So you'll get the division between these two resistors to do the dimming. So that's how the dimming works. The dimming comes in, it gets latched when it needs to be there. And the underline also gets latched here. So how does the underline work? Well, the underline comes along and here's the video coming in, but this is actually an OR gate, okay? So if this is low, then it will, it will override the video. It doesn't matter what the video is. This thing will say, all right, go ahead and put a one here. Go ahead and put a one all the time. So anytime the underline bit is set, and it gets latched in here, then the video will always come out at five volts and you'll get an underline. So clock, 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 that eight megahertz clock is going along, but it'll just stay in a high state. So that's how it does the, that's how it does the underline. So it's a really, 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 really simple circuit to do video. Um, it's really, really cool. Now that you have to put in the horizontal sync pulses and the vertical sync pulses and stuff to get the composite right. And that, that's, that's, that's on another page, but it's not that difficult to insert in the clock generation scheme. Um, but this particular part is, is super clever and uh, I just really like the schematic here. I just think this is very, very elegant that we have uh, this character generation ROM, we're scanning through the lines, we're clocking parallel data out and then we serialize it with this eight megahertz clock. So um, very, very clever. Um, and uh, I was assuming that this particular uh, Osborne was dead in this region because the lady who sold it to me actually posted a video of it, quote, running, and it was all broken. The video was all scrambled and stuff. So I thought maybe the video section was dead on it, but it sounds like maybe it's just a power supply issue or something. Um, but uh, um, yeah, when I do get it up and running, I'm hoping I'll be able to maybe probe these and give you some waveforms so we can take a look at them. It'll be kind of cool.